Hey. Oh, yeah. Oh. Hey. <laughs> how you doing? Good, how are you? Good to see you. Good to see you, too. Yo, yo, yo. Hi, Fred. Julian. Nice to meet you. How you doing? Hi, yeah. Nice to meet you guys. Don't hit me now. Don't hit me. I know. I don't, I don't fight for yeah. free. Oh, okay. I don't want to. Hold up. Limitless. Take a stomach cow pin in it. I fought the head to witness it. Got my people feeling militant. Uh, way I'm feeling, got me up. Uh, on the mission, got me up. Uh, knowing me, I got the key. Uh, on the vision, I can trust. Uh, trust. Uh, limitless. Take a stomach cow pin in it. I fought the head to witness it. Got my people feeling militant. Uh, way I'm feeling, got me up. Uh, on the mission, got me up. Uh, knowing me, I got the key. Welcome to the pivot. Uh, the one thing we do, man, is we pivot between all things, and this is our first opportunity uh, to get into the octagon, and we are blessed uh, because we have Juliana Pena, the Venezuelan oh. vixen, right, the, the, the bantamweight, the new bantamweight <laughs> champ, and we'll get to why that's important, uh, but this is the pivot, Channing Crowder, Fred Taylor, and obviously the champ. Listen, we need you to subscribe on YouTube, Spotify, Apple, and make sure you like, right, because the more you like, the more money we get. And then we get to stay around. <laughs> you can't tell them. You gonna tell them all? The yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah, I'm sorry. Champ, <laughs> I want I want to get right into it. Yes. Right. So I'm I'm not sure that you know this. Yeah. But I have an MMA podcast with DC. I seen right? it. Yeah. That's why I came here today. Oh crap. Yeah. Okay. So the whole time, right? So your fight with Amanda showed why one of us was a two division champ and why the other one played football. Yeah. Right? Because yes. I'm a fan. Yeah. Right? All, all I've seen, I saw Cyborg. Mm -hmm. I saw Ronda Rousey. Yep. I saw Holly Holm, uh -huh. Misha Tate. I saw all these people fight Amanda Nunes. Let's be honest. And it wasn't much of a fight. Mm. You know? And I watched you fight. I was like, oh yeah, Juliana is really good. And then I'm watching the pre-fight. I was like, dang, she's super confident. And I'm telling DC, there's no way yep. Amanda loses. Yep. And then she loses. Yep. Right? And you don't just beat her. You beat her exactly how you said you would. Mm -hmm. What was that experience like and how were you so confident that you could take down the Lioness? Um, I have been in the game just as long as all those girls that you just named and I have been waiting for my opportunity. I've just been wanting an opportunity, wanting a shot. I've constantly been calling for a shot. Um, it was just all about never having the opportunity to fight the champion. but. When you get into the division, you don't think I'm going to get in the division. I'm going to fight, you know, the bottom of the barrel and, and just be, you know, in the wind. I, I got in the division with a purpose. I want to be a champion. There's a reason why I'm here. I want to fight the best in the world. And I've always gave myself um, the best chance to win, but I just needed an opportunity. So I knew that I was confident. If you're not confident, you probably shouldn't be fighting. And if you don't think that you can be a champion, you should, I don't know, Maybe, do something else. Yeah, do something else. <laughs> exactly. So you got to believe in yourself. If you don't believe in yourself, who's going to believe in you? And um, that's the key is having that faith, having that trust, and obviously knowing that on the back end, putting in the work is obviously what makes you also uber confident. I had put in a ton of work, and I was ready to just have somebody let me off my chain. You, were, you, you had a little beef with RC, right? Well, I, I mean, <laughs> I honestly, I, I came here to confront you <laughs> because I just find it absolutely ridiculous. Like, I'm like, wait a second, what does this guy know about the sport? He doesn't know oh. anything about MMA. Wow. And then he was so negative and was like absolutely sure of himself that I was going to lose. And I'm like, man, screw that guy. <laughs> so, I, I came here to say... Screw me. Yeah, I told you so. No, yeah, listen. <laughs> and, 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 Channing, but that was the thing, though. It had nothing to do with her, right? You it's, were just evaluating the situation. No, I, I wasn't even evaluating the situation. I was a fan, and I was a fan of Amanda Nunes, right? And, and if you and if you take it all the way back to, uh, what was it, uh, Gina Serrano and, and, and Cyborg, like Gina was taking over the world, Cyborg, one round, put her down at the end of the round. And then Cyborg stands across from Amanda Nunes, and she just throws bombs. And so, like, from the fans' perspective, you, you start to make these people bigger than life. And it wasn't that I didn't understand how good of a wrestler she was. I didn't understand how technical of a striker she was. It had absolutely nothing to do with Juliana. It was all Amanda Nunes. And my fandom made me wrong. And I, I was wrong. Yeah. 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 Well, yes, yes. Yes. Well, well, you should. Well, well, you should have known that, you know, the machine does a really good job of, of propelling who they want forward. But any, like, real true fan would know that I absolutely stood a chance. 
Absolutely. Because I've been in the division just as long as the rest mm -hmm. of these girls. When um, Dana White opened up the door in 2013, you know, he handed a belt to Rhonda. It's like, I don't know what promotion you go into. And they literally just, here, welcome to the promotion. Here's a belt. He just gifted her a belt. She only had to fight one person. I had to fight four when I was on the Ultimate Fighter. So at this point, I have four fights in the UFC. She's only had one or two, you know. So I've been in this division just as long as all the rest of these girls. Like I said, I was never given the opportunity. I was calling for the opportunity for many years. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, when you get that that shot at the king, you, you better not miss. And so that was my mindset is just, you know, go in there, put the world on notice, let everybody know I'm still here. Hello, remember me. Give the division a, a breath of fresh air. And um, I, I just had to go in there and do my job. And so that's what it comes down to is knowing how to do your job. So I'm not that much of a fan of UFC. Sure. I, I don't know a lot. Sure. But I did some research on you. <laughs> you came here to confront RC. Yeah. And that's my boy. I'm going to help him. He <laughs> might need my help. I need right now. <laughs> right now. But, 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 you know, I ain't going to let her come cross to him. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be but, ugly if she get over to this. No question. I, I, I want to go back to, um, you're not a stranger to confrontation. No. December 2015. Mm -hmm. This is Pivot. This is why it's called a Pivot. You were arrested mm -hmm. for a bar fight. Mm hmm can you take us to that night? Sure. So um, when you are in a small town, obviously you're going to get recognized more and more. I started my career in the Pacific Northwest, mm -hmm. and the I'm going to take you back even a little bit further. Okay. I was um, training for my next fight in the UFC. I went to the gym, and I got my knee torn out, four out of five ligaments. And um, most people can't come back from a, a, a devastating knee injury like right. that. Four out of five ligaments is a, is a complete knee blowout. Um, the training partner that I was with, it started a gigantic stir and um, he left the gym and we hadn't seen each other in over two years. I went on to rehab my knee and come back into the UFC. So it was one of my other training partner's birthdays. I went out uh, to celebrate and when I got to the bar, I saw the kid that I hadn't seen since I tore my knee out. And he was actually a good friend of mine and he was drinking and I was drinking and it was almost like... I love you, fam. I'm so sorry. I like this. We haven't seen each other since literally the incident. And so we were kind of like, I love you. No, I love you. We were like having a really good time. Well, there was people there that were like starting stuff. And at one point, this guy grabbed my ass. And so I turned around and I shoved him to the ground. And I said, don't, don't touch me. Um, but prior to that, my training partners were just horsing around with me. So we were like, you know, like juking each other out of the, out of our shorts, and I'd go like this, and he'd fall down, and everyone around us would be like, "Oh, she just kicked his ass," you know. So <laughs> everyone's like getting all hyped up around us, and so when I pushed the guy down, um, they were upset, obviously, but we ignored him. So. We got out on the street, and when we went out on the street, it was just me and him as opposed to our whole group. They had all left. It was just us, and he's real short. So all of those guys that I pushed, friends, came, and they jumped us, and it was just me and him versus, like, freaking 10 dudes. And so I cracked that guy in the face, and I picked up my friend because he was getting beat by, like, three guys. I grabbed him. I'm like, we got to go because he was curled up in the fetal position. I yanked him up, and I'm like, let's run. And so we ran down the street, and when we ran, we stopped at a bar that we started. Now, the bartender, I used to ref his fights, and he's a, his uh, little sister used to be my best friend, so he's a good friend of mine. And I'm like, we need to use the bathroom because the guy, my friend, my guy that tore my knee out was literally bleeding out of everywhere. His eyes, his nose, his mouth, his ears, he was bleeding. I didn't know where he was hurt. So I'm like, let's go use uh, the bathroom and clean up your face. And so... I went to the bartender, I said, Levi, we need to use the bathroom. He said, go ahead, Jules. And so we were on our way to the bathroom. Well, the bouncer saw that he was all bleeding. And the bouncer is my boxing coach's arch nemesis. So I'm in a small town, right? Yeah. My boxing coach used to be former heavyweight champ. And so he's a heavyweight, the bouncer. And he was like, you can go, he can stay. And I'm like, well, I'm not the one bleeding. I got to fix my friend. I got to help my friend. He was like, you can go, he can stay. And so I'm like, let us use the bathroom. Levi already said. And Levi was like, I'm new here. I'm not going to vouch. Like, I don't want to lose my job, yeah. you know? And so um, we got upset. And the guy literally picked me up. And he threw me out the door. And um, I fell off the, the step. And I broke everything in my purse. I had my makeup, my show, cell phone shattered. Like, he threw me off of the ledge. And so when I got up, I just kind of teep kicked him. And I said, get off me. Don't touch me. And he's on a ledge. He's very tall, big heavyweight. And it, like, landed in this area. And so I didn't do it on purpose, but I was just like, don't touch me. You know, I was just trying to separate distance and say, don't, don't touch me. So the guy's like, we're going to call the cops. We're like, oh, call the cops. You know what I mean? I literally took three steps. And right when I took those three steps, the cops were there, and I got arrested. So we might not stand a chance. 
No, I, helping you might not be a good listen, idea. That was never going to be part but you of had, it. You had to be on good behavior for at least a year. Yeah. What was that part like? I was in the wrong place, wrong time, you know? And nothing good happens after like 11 or 12 o'clock at night. That's when the <laughs> devil be. comes out, you know? Right. So I shouldn't have been out. I shouldn't have been drinking. And it was another thing about like maybe put more effort onto protecting myself when I go out in my small hometown, you know? Mm -hmm. It's like, yeah, I can't just go out by myself anymore. I was out with myself. I met everybody there, but like, I can't go out by myself. I have to make sure that I'm with people that I trust mm -hmm. and people that are going to take me out of bad situations. Wow. Like, bad Cause I've heard about that. Like you're a trained fighter. Right. So you're like a, you're a weapon. Right. How, like, do you think about that? That you're a weapon, like living every day, moving around. Like if, if me, if I go on Walgreens and get in a fight, and you go on Walgreens and get in a fight, two different things. It's two different things. Do you like when does when do you ever think about that in life? Well, it's the same thing. If you get in a fight and I get in a fight in Walgreens, we're defending ourselves, right? So mm -hmm. I mean, it's the same thing. But what I will say is different is some people don't have a lot going on in their lives and some people have uh, less to lose than what I do. Mm -hmm. So when people, I've noticed this lately, when people try to start something, they have nothing going on in their lives. I have a ton of stuff going on in my life. So my objective is to turn the other cheek and walk away because I can't afford to lose it. They would love to get a nice payday and say, she hit me, you know what I mean? Yeah. And be in a gigantic lawsuit. I can't afford that. So now it's become a thing where it's like, if someone's talking or if someone's trying to start stuff, I absolutely have to just like eat it, turn the other cheek and walk the other way and be like, have a nice day, you know, because I can't afford to, to get in trouble like you that. Like, you like to whoop ass. I, I've been I've been locked <laughs> up. I've been locked up three times for fighting. Like, sure. I've been in jail and all. Sure. Like, it's crazy to see that I, I can feel the energy that you you like to physically whoop somebody else's ass. Well, that's what amazing. everyone says about me, but I swear I'm just a lover bear. I'm just a, te I'm just <laughs> no, a teddy you're bear. You're telling yeah, people that you're not. You <laughs> enjoy <laughs> physically knocking them. Knocking them I mean, other people say that about me. I just like to get paid, and I just this is what I do because I'm good at it. You know what I mean? But it's not my objective to be fighting with people all the time. People want to rile me up, and they want to fight me, and that's how I end up in these situations. Is because everyone always is trying to like start something with me. As soon as a couple of drinks are flying, everyone's trying to you know, you know, throw me in submissions and show me what they know. Right. You know, and then all of a sudden we're like literally in the club, like on the floor throwing up triangles, and like I'm. <laughs> but I, I never start it. I never start it. It's never me. It's always people messing with me. Trying to you know get a rise out of me. I told I when uh, Ron Zook was my head coach when I got locked up. I was at University of Florida, and I told him I was like, Coach, I never start any fights. I just end them. Right. So if if you don't start it but you end it, why the person that ends the fight gets in trouble? Well, you won. But you antagonize me and then get your ass whooped. That's not my problem. But that's what I'm saying. Nowadays, it's like I can't even get there. I just have to turn the other cheek and walk the other way because I can't afford it. You know, I really can't. It's uh, I, Those are not the headlines that I want to be remembered or known for. Is I'm trying to build a legacy and it ain't about getting arrested on the street. I'll tell you that. And that growth, that was growth. You had, you had to figure that out. Absolutely. You grew, you grew into that. Absolutely. But all of this started from a cardio kickboxing class. Mm -hmm. A woman's cardio kickboxing kickboxing class. I was a little chubby bunny and I had to lose some weight. My sister invited me to a woman's cardio kickboxing class. I, I threw my first punch. My coach said, who taught you how to punch? And I said, nobody. He's like, well, where did you box? I said, I didn't. He's like, well, who taught you that? I'm like, you just did. Like, I'm just doing, I'm just doing what you told me to do. So that's how I got started. Even getting started that way, uh, what the UFC or what MMA is now for women, it wasn't always that. Um, you know, you're a, a tough champion, uh, which is obviously, you know, it's given us Stephen Bonner, it's given us Forrest Griffin, it's given us Rashad Evans. Uh, now you, as a champion, when you look back on your entire journey, could you believe from that kickboxing cardio <laughs> class that you'd be the bantamweight champion? No, I, I couldn't because when I started in the woman's cardio kickboxing class, I didn't even know what the UFC was. I didn't even know what the sport of MMA was. So I absolutely didn't find that that was going to happen. But I'll tell you that when you put all of your effort into one thing and focus on one thing, one of these days after over time, it's going to be fruitful and it, you will be successful. So I think one of the main things that helped me is focusing on just one goal. And that was just MMA, just fighting. And if I, I figured if I just keep putting in the work to this, eventually I'm going to, you know, reap the fruits of my labor. And so that eventually happened by becoming champion. When, when did it click? Like, was, was it a day? Was it a moment? Was it a month? Was it a time where, like, you it, were like, yes, I'm one of the baddest motherfuckers in the world. Yes, <laughs> yes. It, it happened twice. Um, in October of 2020, I think I fought Jermaine Durandyman, and I 
went in there thinking, I am fighting the best striker in the division, one of the best strikers in the world. She's so tall and like, how am I going to get past her hands? And then when the fight started, I had her backing up the entire time. I had her, I was cracking her. I And if you check the stats, I actually outstruck her. her. And so I'm like, when, if I can hang with this chick, I can hang with them all, you know, bring them on. Like literally anybody, put them in front of me and I'll fight them. Now you are the, the champ. Mm -hmm. um, but probably even more importantly, you're a mom. Yes. And you know, you mentioned tearing your ligaments. Um, you know, you come back and win the championship after having a C-section, having to repair your body, you know, after all of those things. When, when you think about the duality of your life, I don't think we often see that, right? We, we're, not, we're not looking at you in the octagon when you get your hand raised and think to ourselves, I bet she's a wonderful mom. Yeah, you know, we like that's a bad, that's a bad woman. Mm -hmm. Has being a mom changed you though, when you think about what your priorities are? Yeah, absolutely. Um, there's a way more to fight for now. All of a sudden, it's not just about me anymore. It's about my baby and providing for my baby as best as I can. And it's weird because prior to having uh, uh, my daughter and prior to becoming a mother. When they would ask me, what does this fight mean to you? Or, you know, what are you going to do in this fight? I would talk in terms of like, this is my baby and I'm a mama bear and they're trying to, you know, take away food from my cub and I can't let it happen. But I didn't have a kid. And they would always be like, what are you talking about? I'm like, it's just a metaphor. I'm a mama bear in my head, you know, like right. I'm going to protect my cub. Sure. Well, now I actually have a kid. Now I actually do have a cub to provide for and that I can't let somebody take, you know, the food off my, my baby cub's table. And so um, it's, it's weird that it's, you know, kind of come full circle. Being a mother is something that I always have wanted to do. I do want to have more kids in the future. It gives me more to fight for now that I have a little baby and especially somebody who's looking up to me who's, you know, I'm her hero. And so it's um, very inspiring for me to have her in my life and to have her in all my training sessions and outside the cage and go mama. You know, it's just it's um, she's a light of my life and she literally lights up whatever room she's in. She's an incredible kid. Honestly, all the parents say that about their kids. Right. But like, she's so cool. <laughs> nah, some kids. Yeah. So she, yeah, yeah but, but she won't say it though, but yeah. you won't say it. We, yeah. we all hey. know it, but you won't say but, it. But, but she doesn't. She's ultra cool. Like she's a totally cool kid and and honestly she just gives me um so much more to fight for. So she's four. She's just turned four. Right. So when she's at your your, your training session mm -hmm. sparring, do you guys kind of wrestle around, mess around? Do, yeah. Do, can you see her in the octagon? I, I would never. I, that's not what I want for her. That's not the life that I want for her. But uh, her dad owns a jujitsu gym. He's a black belt in jujitsu, and so she trains, you know, two, three times a week in jujitsu. And then she comes with me to all my training sessions. So she's constantly seeing it. I mean, literally since I had her, she's been in her car seat in the gym to all my training sessions for you know four years. And so this is a life that you know is something that she sees on a daily basis but do i want her to do it no but if I, she says i don't think you can stop it no why, why, but why would you not want her to do it i'll tell you this i'll tell you this if she says mom i really want to be a fighter and she's dedicated and she's passionate and she shows me that interest i'll be like whatever makes you happy baby like mm. you know if she shows that interest like i had that dedication that like i had but if she's doing it to try to you know live up to mom's shoes or for whatever reason other than it's being her own passion then i wouldn't want her to do it listen i've torn both my knees out i've dislocated both my elbows i've broke ligaments i've busted my nose there's it's a hard life for a fighter hard life for a fighter and i wouldn't want that for for my daughter because i know the road that i've taken to get here and i mean what am i going to do when i'm 50 i'm probably going to need hip replacements or knee replacements you know what i mean because i've literally put my body through the ringer and so you know those are things that you don't think about when you're starting your career as a young fighter but they're definitely things that i was creeping into the back of my head nowadays like i got to make sure i get paid because i'm going to have to hold on to this chunk of money for the rest of my life it's not like i get a monthly paycheck every month i get paid in one lump sum and then i got to hold on to that forever and make sure that you know she's going to be able to eat later on as well right. as myself and so fighting is a difficult life and it's not something that i would wish so, on my children just really quick chan in our sport football the average lifespan is three and a half years. Oh, wow. And we retire at very young ages. 87% of the guys, when they're retired, they're broke or divorced, filing bankrupt or whatever. Yeah. I'm sure in fighting, your lifespans aren't, you know, right. as long, your average career lifespan. Yeah. Do you guys in your sport have a lot of uh, uh, stories or issues with finances when guys are done? 
100%. Girl, girls hundred percent. Yes, mm. it's it's a big thing. It's a it's a big trouble thing that fighters are having that they've been trying to fix for for years with getting unions done. And you know it's hard because it's like we want a union, and then it's like, well, I'll just pay this guy five and five, and he's going to show up and he's going to do it, and I'm going to you know put some shorts on him, and he's going to jump at the opportunity to go fight. You know, so it's like you're you're disposable. You know, they love you, but you know you're only as good as your last fight, and if they don't like you, you're gone, and then go find something else to do. Super Bowl mm -hmm. yeah. You're coming up through the ranks. Yep. They know you can whoop ass, but then you get pregnant. And it's one thing about the female sports is where, like, is that a liability? Because people always try to find a reason not to pay you or not to do something. And as a female athlete, they almost make getting pregnant is like an ailment. Right. Like, how is that when you're training, you're coming up, and then now you're pregnant? You can't fight. Well, like, you had a, you had a C-section. Yeah. Like, what's that whole process with your career, mm -hmm. and then now with family, with life, with your daughter. Well, it's it's crazy. So we talked about the shelf life of a, of a pro athlete. I have a window of opportunity to jump through. It's this small. Mm -hmm. So when you get pregnant, first you're going through your own head like, oh, no, my window's, you know, coming even smaller. I'm pregnant now. Like you said, you could view it as an ailment. But when I went to the UFC and I went to Dana White and I went to Sean Shelby, they were over the moon happy for me. They were so excited. They were like... Women pay hundreds of thousands of dollars to get pregnant and they still can't conceive. This is a blessing. We're so happy for you. Fighting will be here when you're done, Juliana. So just have your baby and when you're ready to come back, come back. And so I was so well received by Sean Shelby and Dana White when I got pregnant and they just made me feel so confident that, of course, I'm going to come back and uh, they'll be waiting and, and welcoming with open arms when, when I'm ready. And so that was a great feeling to know that the company had my back on it and they were actually very happy for me and supportive. Is it very difficult? We talked to Dana last week. Well, I basically just continued to ask him questions while we were out drinking. Um, <laughs> this, that's what happened. Yeah. We ain't sit down with him. Our, <laughs> hey, that, hey that's how you do business. Yeah, I just harass him. Harass him it's, at a weird, the bar. it's a weird, it's a weird industry. That's where we do our business. <laughs> yeah, I cornered him. I was like, hey, you know, like I got an MMA show. He's like, yeah, I know. We promote it every week. I was like, so can I talk to you? And so he gave me some time. When when you're football is different, right? Like football has. Football has, has, has a commissioner, football has boards, football has teams and executives and all of these things. Uh, fighting is totally different. Fighting is individual. Yep. And you're obviously in the biggest promotion that there is for MMA. I mean, most people now who understand combat sports knows that it's bigger than boxing, yep. right? Because y'all give out one belt. Yeah. And every now and then Dana will get cute and give out an interim belt. Mm -hmm. You mentioned getting your, getting your opportunity. Do you think it's harder because... In UFC, it's about the matchmakers, right? And it's about making the fights uh, that have uh, the most spice. So when you were, when, how difficult was it for you when you were waiting to get your shot, you know, as you said, at the king? Well, it was frustrating because I'm talking about a title shot and then they didn't give it to me. They give it to everybody else and I'm thinking like what do I got to do to to get a title shot and so it becomes a thing where I'm even annoyed at my own self because every time I can hear myself in an interview it's talking about me in a title shot and they're still not giving it to me so I'm just like Ugh, how much more am I going to say this and still not get it I was falling on deaf ears it was very frustrating um, but with that said I will definitely give uh, credit to the UFC as well because I did tear my knee out they didn't tear my knee out I tore my knee out you know I they didn't get pregnant I got pregnant you know so there was things where it was like, okay, well, you tore your knee out and then you got pregnant. So there was things, you know, you, you're crying about a title shot, but can you even fight right now? Right. You know? And so it became one of those things where I was almost my own worst enemy. But it couldn't have happened at a better time for me because Amanda has created this legacy of destroying all of these legends in the game. And, and that was why I picked her. I, yeah, and I get it. <laughs> but Go that's, to hell, man. Yeah. I'm on your side, yeah. JP. Go yeah. to hell. Yes. You hater. No. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, you know, I needed an opportunity. and But the thing is, is that it, my win wouldn't have been as sweet if she didn't have this list of giants that she slayed, you know? I slayed the giant that slayed all the giants, you know? And so that, to me, made my win uh, way more special. And so now, you know, many people think, not me, because this time... I, 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 this I time, I, I, enough is enough. You go on the show. Yeah, right, I don't yeah, know if right. I can catch you if she hits you. Yeah, you, you go, I don't know if I'm gonna catch you if she gets to you, bro. Yeah, yeah your knee's too bad. <laughs> you have oh, no shot. Oh, oh, oh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you have no shot. Right <laughs> and so, it's, and, and so now you're the, the the champion. What has changed about life for you? 
though? Or, or is it kind of the same old thing? We still train, we still work, we still raise our babies. Or, or is there more pressure on you or more spotlight on you now that you're the champion? I would say that the biggest thing for me is my mindset and continuing to be in that mindset of, yeah, I'm the champion, but in my head, I'm not. I'm the challenger. I'm the challenger. I still have work to do, and I have been gutting for this spot. I've been asking to fight for that that target on Amanda's back. Well, now the target's on my back. I got what I wanted, and now you can't act like a champion and think, oh, this is the end, I'll be all. You better be in the gym still acting like a challenger because she's coming for you, and she's coming for everything that you have, and she wants it back, you know? And so in my mind, I have 10 times more work to do, and I have to work even harder than I worked before. Um, one of the things that I think people don't see is the training sessions that I put in because I'm on social media, right? And so I have my social media team that's posting out all these things and it looks ha ha, he he, like having a great time. But I'm grinding, I'm working. I'm, I'm here on, in Texas, I'm still getting my work in. Whenever I travel, I'm still getting my work in. And then when I go home, I'm still training every single day like I was when, before the fight. So now, now you kind of got some, uh, some shy town toughness, right? You're from... <laughs> You're from Spokane? No, yep, I'm from Spokane. Yeah, you're from, so how, how has that transition been for you, and do you think it's helped to have kind of a change of scenery? Yeah, absolutely. So one of the things that I appreciate about Spokane is it was a one-stop shop. The gym was five minutes away from my house, not even. I mean, I could run there. And it um, was great because it had that small town feel, that, you know, grittiness of that little garage that they're still training in, and uh, just raw toughness. And I love that about Spokane. It's full of just raw, pure fighters. Um, one of the things that I noticed when I moved to Chicago is you're, there's bigger fish out there and um, I was complacent in Spokane. So when I got to Chicago, it forced me to level up. It forced me to level up my striking. It forced me to level up my jujitsu and wrestling and I kind of wasn't the, the big fish in a small pond anymore. It was like, welcome to the real world. And um, I like how I've had to develop and change my game since moving to Chicago and I feel like it has helped me um, grow as a fighter in my techniques and, and just overall sharpening all my skills. I've definitely noticed an improvement since moving to Chicago in my in my game. Um, and so I appreciate that about Chicago, absolutely. You, you got an old man? Um, I have and a daddy. I don't no, no, you got a, you got a dude. No, no, I'm you single. Dude, yeah, I'm single, single mom, single mom. But when you're with a man, to know that you can whoop your man's ass. <laughs> Seriously, bro, like, it, like the dynamic of that, like it, that's not normal to be, knowing that you can wear your man's ass out if you need to, like, <laughs> does that change the relationship? Do you have to find a different type dude? Because I don't know if, I've been married 13 years, yeah. but I don't know, I don't know how the dynamic would change if I was scared of my wife. Right. Like, is it different? Yeah, it's a problem. Honestly, it's a problem because um, there's a front where they want to act like they're all tough and secure and, you know, confident in themselves. But at the end of the day, a lot it, it bothers deep down, I think, some men, and those are not the men for me. Mm -hmm. um, but I will say that... Um, I don't want to fight guys. I don't want to fight you. I don't like, <laughs> I, so what, when he was talking about me getting arrested, the kid that I got arrested with is the kid that tore out my knee and I tore my knee four out of five ligaments thinking that I could beat him. Like I got my knee torn out cause I was trying to beat a man, you know, mm -hmm. it's like, no, I've learned my lesson. Like I have fought dudes in the street before. I've had my eyes swollen shut for three days and 11 stitches. Cause I went into the back alley and fought a dude. And then I didn't learn my lesson after that. I went and got my knee torn out. After after that, I learned my lesson. I don't want to fight guys. I don't want to fight you. You know, if I'm in a relationship with you, I promise you, I won't lay a hand on you. Like I don't. I'm not trying to fight. You know, I'll defend myself. I'll mess around like I'll you know horse around. But it's not my objective to emasculate a man or to make him think that you know I'm gonna whoop his ass. You know, it's yeah. it's their own insecurity that plays in their oh, head. Oh no, I'll tap. Yeah. So, so as soon as you grab so my I'm gonna tap. Hey Chad, you know you know like how you play wrestle, like your wife yeah, come in and play kid. wrestle. Could you imagine like play wrestling and then get caught in a guillotine? <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> so yeah. so in, in that in that in those type of situations though, if you are having, let's call it a conversation sure. with you know with your significant other, do you feel like you have to be kind of more passive in the way that you approach the conversation and not make them kind of feel like, oh, she's swelling up on me. You know? Well, I feel bad because sometimes I feel like I have to like diminish the light a little bit because at the end of the day, men are alpha, they're, you know, hunter gatherers. They want to be the ones that, you know, go and do the, the slaying of the dragon. They don't like when girls know more about fighting than them, you know? And so that's something that I have to sometimes hold my tongue on a little bit because I'm like, no, oh, that's not, 
that's not right. You know what <laughs> right. I mean? Like, I know how to fight, you know? Right. And so, I, again, if they're insecure about that, those are not the men for me. I, it's better for me to have somebody that will let me be myself and let me shine my light. But at the same time, I'll lay down. I'll have no problem laying down if I trust you to lead. You know what mm. I mean? But I got to be able to trust you to lead. Um, uh, but... That's the thing is I just haven't found that person that can be, you know, secure in, in who they are and themselves and not care about the fact that, you know, I'm going to go to a restaurant and people are going to ask for pictures or, and I'm going to ask them to hold my purse. You know what I mean? They're going to hold it and be proud of me and be my biggest fan and say, go do it. You know, Ma, go get your stuff, you know. Um, but guys act like they can handle it and they can't. And one other thing I will just end on this is this is not the year for love for me. This is not the time for trying to get in a relationship or try to find that man that's secure in his thing. I'm on a mission. I got goals. I got things to do. And uh, love is a number one career killer to a professional athlete's life, in my opinion. And I am just trying to go stack my chips and get my bread and do what I got to do to uh, cement my legacy. I cannot be messing around with these dudes. Like, it's not on the agenda. I've made my mind up this year in, in the beginning of January. Love is not on the cards for me this year. It's about me and my career and my daughter. If it's not about my daughter, if it's not about my career, I can't. I'm a horse. I'm a thoroughbred. I got my blinders on. I'm not looking this way, not looking this way. I'm looking at the end goal, and that's cementing my legacy and defending my belt. A dog. That's called a dog in my. I don't, I'm from Atlanta. That's a dog. Yeah, no, I got a dog in me. I got a dog in me. Yeah, a big old dog. There's a big old fight in me, and I am ready to again let have them let me off my chain. You say no love this year. You know when we when we prepare for games, they say you cannot or you might you should not have sex. Yeah. This far out from you know a game. You're mad. I don't even want to ask the question. I feel I feel crazy. I feel crazy asking the question. I feel crazy asking the question. And no no disrespect. I'm not being disrespectful. I'm never that way. Yeah. He's not. Do you like do you think of these things? I do. I do. Um and it's something that I, I don't want to say is like the reason why I won, but at the end of the day, I'm like, maybe that was the reason, you know, because I wasn't like, you know, um, doing active. any of that. Yeah, I wasn't active before the fight, you know, so like, I'm like, I'm trying to think of like rinse and repeat, you know, yeah, find what, right. what the recipe was. And so in my head, I'm like, yeah, that, that, that must have played a part, right? Because I wasn't doing anything and I was being good and I was literally like go, going to church every Sunday and I was just on my stuff, you know, and just totally 110% focused. So when I, when I look back on trying to redo what I did leading up to the fight, that absolutely plays into my head where I'm just like, I can't have any part of that because that wasn't in the recipe the first time. I don't want to add anything. We've, we've done almost 25 shows. I don't know how many shows we've done, but that was the most awkward moment for me. You open the door, so now I gotta ask a question. <laughs> you you being a a, a dog, an yeah. ass kicker, mm -hmm. like as a woman, yeah. Are you are you the aggressor? Like, do you be like, come over here and get this? No, <laughs> you know what I'm no, saying? No, like, <laughs> no, no. And I, I I took a picture of a meme the other day because it's it's so me. It's literally <laughs> um, you come take this. Yeah, thing. man. Because yeah, because sometimes. It says, how Leo women flirt. A guy and a girl, guy and a girl. She doesn't say anything. He doesn't say anything. And then he still doesn't say anything. And she walks away. She says, whatever, his loss. <laughs> like, that's me. Like, that's me. I am not, I am very reserved. I would never, you know, approach at all. Like, if 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 you have something to say, then you're going to have to come say it because I'm not going to say anything. You know what I mean? I am I would never call a man, for example. I would never, like, text a man first. You know, I would never do something like that. I'm very reserved. It's, it's, I I'm very traditional in that sense. You know what I mean? I'm not one of those ultra aggressive chicks, you know, like that's not cute. So you could turn it on. Like we, we talk about like a fit, like it's guys that could turn on the aggression on the field and turn it off. We all play ball. You turn it on, but you're, you're just like, it's crazy to say. You're a normal woman. Yeah. And then you turn it on to go out there and punch somebody in the face and make them bleed and break their arm. Yeah. And then you can come out from breaking a woman's arm with one of those little leg locks. Yeah. And then just... How you doing? Yeah. Like, it's, it's, it's crazy to hear. But that's what I'm saying. Uh, people put me in this box of being, you know, this ultra aggressive fighter, and I am. That's my job. But when if I'm not there fighting in the octagon, that's not what I want to do. I want to laugh. I want to have a good time. I want to, you know, relax and enjoy and, and just be. I don't want to be fighting all the time. And I, I think that's a big misconception is people think that I'm feisty 24-7 and I'm always trying to, to get at somebody and... Maybe there might be a little bit of truth in that. I don't see it. I feel like 
like I'm cool as a cucumber, like real chill type of person. You know, I'm not going to start anything. But um, definitely people, I think, think that I want to fight all the time. I want to fight in a relationship. And that's not, that's not my goal. You know, I do that in, for my job. I don't want to do it, you know, in my relationship. I'm sorry, but this had to come out eventually. Yeah. <laughs> so the rematch. Yes. How do you see the rematch going? The buildup is going to be crazy. And, and we can be honest here. You're going to be the underdog. Yep. Even though you won the last fight and you won it convincingly, mm -hmm. you're going to be the underdog going into that fight. Are you confident that you can, I guess, shock the world again? I wanted this fight because I wanted to prove that it wasn't a fluke. It wasn't something where it just happened overnight and I just, she had a bad night and just poof, it was there. No, I called how I was going to beat her five years ago. I finally got the opportunity and I did exactly what I said I was going to do. In this instance, the fight will be extremely different. She's going to come with 110% more um, furiousness. And my objective is to know that she wants to come for me with everything that she has. And I, since I know that, my job is going to be to, to defend and be ready for everything and be equipped with whatever she comes and brings at me. I will be ready, and I am confident that I will get my hand raised at the end of the night again. I absolutely wanted this rematch to let everyone know again for the second time. It wasn't just some fluke. I didn't just fall out of the blue sky. I have been here this entire time. Are y'all cool? Like... If, if, you, if, if, if Amanda's here now, would y'all sit down and have dinner? And all? I mean, I don't know about having dinner. I don't have, you know, a problem with her. Absolutely respect her and everything that she's done in the sport. I think she's amazing. You know, she's a great fighter. But I am not, um, we're not braiding each other's hair. You know what I mean? <laughs> uh, uh, she she kind of was, a, drove me a little bit crazy in a sense on the Ultimate Fighter. And it's I respect her. But no, we're not, we're not friends. We're not homies. No. Like, on, I got an on-site list. There's three dudes in my life. If I see them, I'm going to dive on their ass the second they walk in the door. Yeah. Is it, a, is it like that? Or is it just, you know, no. across the room, you give her a nod. You know, I'll, nod. I'll tell you this. It's a, it's a professional job. It's a sport. And I am trying to um, fight for, you know, I'm a prize fighter. I have nothing personally against this girl. I don't know what she does in her free time. I don't know what she, I don't care. I don't have anything against her. This is a sport, and it's this is just my job. This is just what I do. It's I don't have to have this animosity to want to, you know, kill her. Of course, it'd be great more for the fans if they knew that there was some, you know, big beef between us. But the truth is, is I don't have a problem with her. We're both athletes. We're both moms. We're both professionals, and this is a sport. This is just what we do. This is just our job. Well, champ, thank you so much yep. for coming. I certainly will not speak of you the way I did last time. But this was an awesome interview, eye-opening uh, for all three of us, and truly an honor for me as someone who doesn't know nothing about MMA but gets to cover it. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, you're lucky. You're lucky. You're lucky. Thank you. <laughs> no, we good. We good. Y'all yeah, good? Yeah. It's like, like the face-off. <laughs> be. Thank it's you. It's like the face-off. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Yeah, man. Hold up. Limitless. Take a stomach cow pin in it. I thought they here to witness it. Got my people feeling militant. Uh, way I'm feeling, got me up. Uh, on the mission, got me up. Uh, knowing me, I got the key. Uh, on the vision, I can trust. Uh, trust. Uh, limitless. Take a stomach cow pin in it. I thought they here to witness it. Got my people feeling militant. Uh, way I'm feeling, got me up. Uh, on the